Welcome to the Like a Boss podcast presented by the Portland Press Herald and sponsored by Bernstein Schur. New England cancer specialists live and work in Maine.com, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, People's United Bank, and Vistage. Now here's your host, Portland Press Herald publisher and CEO, Lisa DeSisto. Greetings from Waterville, Maine, where we are here this afternoon with President Laurie Lachance, the president of Thomas College. So let's start, as we always do, by meeting the boss. So tell us, Laurie, about your path to president of Thomas College, but let's start with where you grew up. Oh my goodness. Well, the path's been very interesting. I grew up in Dover, Foxcroft, Maine, my hometown that I, to this day, absolutely adore. So fairly humble roots took me to Bowdoin College. And then a very interesting path. Started at Central Maine Power, where I was their economist for 10 years, and then had this opportunity to go over and become the state economist and served in that role for 11 years for three different governors. Uh, From that, became the head of the Maine Development Foundation. And finally, this magical moment where (laughs) out of nowhere, my name was put in nomination to become the next president of Thomas College. Now, when it says out of nowhere, do you know where it came from? Like, I who, do, who, who actually. Who nominated you? Is it a secret? or? Can um, you, no, can it's not really a okay. secret. Um, he, Chuck Hewitt, he's from uh, the Jackson Laboratory. He worked for Governor King when oh, okay. I was working for Governor King. So mm-hmm. you were the first female and alum in the 122-year history of the college to lead the college. How, how does that feel? It feels wild. Yeah. I actually was the first female state economist, the first female to head the Development Foundation, and then the first female to head this. It was never intentional, nor was it my desire. It just kind of happened. And how did you realize that you'd be interested in a career in economics that le- that, that eventually le- led you here? You must have been really good in math. Math and I was, theory. Oh, it's very funny. I was actually quite good in math. I thought I'd be a math major until I hit math theory. And that seemed absolutely ridiculous to me. And I loved my economics courses at Bowdoin. And I thought, I love this. This is much more practical. And from there, having the opportunity to actually be an economist and serve in that role for 29 years, Mm. oh, loved every day of it. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us about Thomas College, uh, I guess, by the number of students, faculties, uh, specialties. Thomas College has about 850 undergraduate and about 200 graduate students. About half of those are in business majors, and the other half are in what I tend to call the very practical or career-driven liberal arts. Mm -hmm. So criminal justice, education, computer science, things that lead to a job in the main economy. Uh, Well... I think that probably feeds into then this remarkable statistic that 94% of Thomas graduates have a job within 90 days of graduation. Like, how do you, how do you do that? We focus from day one on all of the skills and attributes that would make for a great employee. So it's more than just the academic performance of any student. It has to do with finding their own passion, their own talents, um, understanding the importance of being able to communicate. That starts from day one. Right. To collaborate, to be creative, um, all those things that employers are looking for. And when you focus on that from day one and you make that a part of their total experience, they're ready. Mm -hmm. So uh, internships are a big part of that success. How do you you partner with the business business community? Who's driving those relationships? Well, given our roots as a business school for the first, you know, three quarters of our history, um, we've always had very close relationship with the business community. Our board is made up predominantly of self-made business folks. Um, They understand what it takes to succeed in business and are very active in all of our community. So we try to keep a very open door policy and make sure we're in touch with the future employers of our students Mm -hmm. and keep asking them, what do you need? How can we better serve you by adding value, sending them on an internship, preparing them so that they can add value to your business when they enter. 
There, there's so much talk about uh, the gap in the workforce that we're experiencing here in Maine, and it only really is forecasted to get work. But it seems like Thomas College could be just a critical uh, solution to, to part of that problem, the way that you've partnered with, with the business community. Absolutely. And if you look at who we serve and how we serve, that's the most important piece. As an economist who studied Maine's economy for 30 years, um, I've grown to understand the most critical investment we can make in our future of the state, the most important economic development investment, is in the education of our people, Mm -hmm. in a knowledge-based, technology-driven economy. That's what's going to drive growth. So for us, it's trying to, to find that match where we send students into the economy to serve. And, you know, about 75% of our students come from Maine and 85% of our graduates stay and work in Maine. Right, right. Yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful statistic. Uh, what are some of the skill sets that you think are critical that your graduates leave, leave here with, both from a soft side, you know, of, of, of skill sets from an interpersonal communication perspective, but also you know, technology skills? What do you think some of the critical things are? Well, starting first with the academic, given the focus of our entire college and our programmatic offerings, it's it's making sure they get the right skills, whether it's in accounting or mm-hmm. teaching or criminal justice. So they're going to get that side that's in their career proper. But in addition to that, the first year in, they take two public speaking courses. They take uh, written communications. And the ability to communicate is probably the single single greatest thing that students need to have because it doesn't matter how great your skills are. Right. If you can't communicate with the people you work with and work in a team in a collaborative manner and innovate to help um, add more value to your workplace, you're not going to be as successful. So we try to hit on the whole part of the students. They're offered leadership training in their very first year. Mm -hmm. Community service is a big part of what they do, to have empathy and to understand how you um, work with your community. It's not just about you. There's much more in the way of need in the world. So it seems like you're really trying to produce these well-rounded graduates that both have the IQ that they need for their their profession, but also the EQ that they need to relate to their coworkers or th- their clients or whatever it might be. Yes. Um, so um, recently, you announced um, is it the the launch or expansion of the Harold Alfon Institute for Business Innovation? Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. That was actually over two years in the making. About two years ago, the head of the foundation came to me, given my economic background, Mm -hmm. and said, look, Lori, how could we invest in you in such a way that Thomas College would grow, but the economy of the greater Waterville area would grow as well? So it was a great opportunity for us. They gave us a little seed money. We went around the U.S. to see the very best practices in entrepreneurial institutes, in family business institutes. We got tremendous advice, brought it back, came up with a laundry list of things we could do that we believe as a college would help the surrounding community. And then we talked to 500 people in this area through focus groups and surveys and our own students and had them tell us, what what do you want? What would be of greatest benefit to you? From there, we formed the proposal that ultimately became the Institute. So what, um, from from your perspective, what are some of the best results or outputs to come out of the work the Institute's doing? Well, it's just very beginning. We mm-hmm. announced it in May, but we've already launched, and there's really three parts to it. The first is to create a really, truly signature, state-of-the-art internship program that allows small to medium-sized businesses who wouldn't normally have an HR department that could even take on interns? Right. Because, they, you know, who has that? Right. So many of main businesses. Takes the administrative burden off them and allows them to benefit from technology, technologically savvy interns mm-hmm. who can bring new ideas to the business and also exposes them so that students even know they exist and are a job opportunity going forward. So that's one piece. The second piece is upgrading the skills and truly the vision of area CEOs and workers. 
So if you're an entry level and you need leadership skills to develop to that middle management, we'll put in special workshops for that. Uh, technological workshops to upgrade the, the technology skills of your workers. For CEOs, we'll surround them with a set of mentors who can help advise them on how they can grow the business or fill in for their own weakness. Everybody has a weakness. And that weakness may be what's preventing your business from going to the next level. So let's gather the, the town mothers and fathers mm -hmm. uh, together who might have that skill and help you get over that bump. And the third area is, frankly, just trying to create the ecosystem that's necessary to have startups, to embrace change and innovation, and make it a part of the culture of this region of the state. Um, so when do you think you're going to start to, I know you've had some workshops and, and some activity there, but what's, what's, the, what's the, I guess, the uh, calendar look like for The calendar that? is a full one, yeah. and it's a mixture of things to try to really, um, the Waterville area is in a period of renaissance, mm -hmm. and we're trying to add fuel to that fire. Mm. And the more uh, opportunities for people to intersect, the more that excitement will grow that will carry the, the region forward. We've started an entrepreneurial speaker series. We've already had a couple of guests so that people can get an inside view into what it takes really to start up a business. Yeah. What's the pluses, the minuses, et cetera. Um, we're going to have a TED Talk mm -hmm. um, that will be focused in this region uh, and host that event. In the fall, we'll have an innovation workshop that all area leaders and they can bring their staff to to learn whether it's design thinking or innovation engineering, new ways that they can take back to their own business to reinvent themselves. Um, we had um, a coding class, Code School 101, yeah. where um, 22 people came on a full day on a Saturday to find out if that's something that might interest them. Right. It does, you don't have to be a computer expert to learn coding. You have to be a logical thinker. Yeah. Some of the greatest coders come from the music field or the fine arts because of the logical way they think, but they're also creative in the way they invent. So um, those are some of the things we've launched right away. Um, there's an advisory council of area leaders who's driving the process, so we make sure we're doing the right things. Um, we've trained our faculty in cutting edge innovative approaches. So they're learning design thinking and lean startup, and they've already had a uh, one week intensive college level course for our students and in that one week every student created a business and created their website to market their business and what an opportunity right right to, to understand what it takes what the elements are and if this is even something that would interest you yeah it's, not, it's such practical knowledge and information for really what we need um, here in Maine to fuel the economy so it seems like um, there's a, just a, a wonderful connection um, with what, what we read about in the Press Herald all the time. <laughs> so um, let's talk about your leadership style. Um, so there's a lot to communicate, and there's a lot that's changing. You've got a lot of different constituencies, right? So you've got students, you've got faculty, you've got the business community. How do you keep all of, all of those groups informed of your, pro of your progress <laughs> and connected to your vision? Well, um, for starters, my leadership style is a very open one. I try to be very honest and candid. I'm not trying to be... Uh, uh, Thomas College is such a humble, down-earth place. Mm -hmm. that's, that's who we are. That's our roots. And we don't want to be anything different than that because we think that's awesome. <laughs> There's so much we can do with that. Um, very open office. Anybody's welcome. Uh, students call me Lori. Yeah. I don't go for the big title thing. Yeah. Um, I think... Parents uh, trust us. We're a safe, welcoming, warm environment. Uh, that's what I try to model every single day. The interesting thing for me as an outsider, I was an economist. What does an economist know about running a college? Mm -hmm. What I came with was a knowledge of what we needed in the main economy and then a network that could make a difference and change the way we do things. And so we've been able to lean in and try things that others might not even imagine possible because why not? Right. Let's partner, let's try it. Right, right. You know, I, I don't have that voice that says, oh, we've never done it that way before because I don't know how folks did it. 
So uh, the, the interesting part is to lead in an, in an industry where everyone else knows the rules of engagement more than you do. Mm-hmm. That's been an interesting challenge, but a fun one. Mm-hmm. Because the whole world of higher ed is changing so rapidly. There's never been this pace of change or this much pressure in higher ed. And the old models just aren't working. So we have to try something new. And I think that's what we've been able to do um, because we're not afraid to, to lean in and try it. Yeah. From a nuts and bolts communication perspective, what works best for you? Are you emailing people? Are you on social media? Are you doing video updates from the, from, from the president? How do you stay in touch with everyone? And let you know, because things are happening so quickly. They are happening quickly. We have an opening day where every single person that works for the college is there. That's a great way to start. Mm-hmm. Um, I have uh, open offices with faculty. Faculty comes in at the end of every semester, and they can tell me anything they want or ask me anything they want. We have open meetings on budgets. Um, I find face-to-face is much more effective because when you put something in an email, which we have to do sometimes, sure. obviously we have to, um, but sometimes it's not interpreted the way you mean it. Mm-hmm. And it's much more effective to look people in the eye. And when they can see uh, either your concern or your compassion, that's what brings them along to follow. Um, so I think leadership is a very personal game. Yeah. Well, I love what you just told me when we walked into your office about how you replaced the kind of cinder block closed entrance to your office with glass doors. And it's it's there's no mystery as to what's happening yeah. here. In what's the going presidents. on in there? What's going what's on in there? there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and of course so we love did that put openness. the candy jar there to, right. to entice people through the door. We serve 70% first in their family to go to college. Yeah. We've put glass throughout this school, and that breaks down a barrier that others might not think of. But nobody likes to walk through a door where they don't know what's on the other side. Right. And particularly if you're the first in your family to go to college, this is a huge barrier that we've taken down. Yeah. Um, very powerful. Um, talk about your team. Who are the critical? I mean, obviously, you know, the entire faculty is critical. But what does your executive team l- look like? Oh, I've just got a great team. Mixture of people who have been here for a while, been in higher ed, who know the higher ed system. So I have a, a provost, mm-hmm. Tom Edwards, who's just excellent at what he does. He knows the rules. He knows the game. He knows what has to be done to keep us right in line with our accreditation. He knows what the cutting edge opportunities are in higher ed from an academic perspective. And he keeps the academic rigor strong. Critically important. I have a a CFO, Beth Gibbs, who's been here for 23 years or so. She knows where every nickel is. Mm -hmm. She, there's no better construction manager, project manager than she is. She's, great. We've just hired a, an executive vice president to take the day-to-day um, activities away from me so I'm not answering every burning call that happens yeah. that I can be freed up to do the more visionary pieces for the college. His name's Bernie Willette. He's wonderful. Oh, so engaging, so kind and friendly. Bob Moore runs advancement for me, or my senior vice president. He's one of the kindest, most compassionate individuals you'd ever met. Everybody loves Bob mm-hmm. and wants to re-engage with the college because of that. Um, we have a, a chief information officer that keeps us uh, really cutting edge. We are always using the most up-to-date tools. Um, all of our students have access to that from a technology perspective. Wonderful vice president of, of student affairs that knows every single person. Wow. Wonderful retention uh, vice president that um, is running state-of-the-art programming. We're the first private college to get a TRIO grant. You know, we've been regionally and nationally recognized for the special edge program, the way we deal with first gen. First in the nation to partner with Jobs for Maine's graduate. So those are the types of programs that we're doing that very, very leading edge for a little tiny college in mm-hmm. Maine. Mm-hmm. Um, it, yeah, it sounds it sounds like you have a, a great team. So let me ask you, if you ever had a, uh, a bad apple on your team? Because it sounds like everyone has a lot of really great, um, you know, interpersonal skills and get along. In your, just in your whole career, what's the best way to kind of deal with a toxic personality that might be hurting your team? Well, I will tell you, I've learned that the hard way. And, and it's not here. I will say 
I would say almost to a person, if not every single individual in this organization is passionate about what we do and who we serve. So there's no bad apples. There's, there's no one that I could even think of that's backstabbing or whatnot. That being said, historically, I haven't counted that. And I, I learned very much the hard way. When that happens, you need to address it immediately. Mm -hmm. Immediately. Because poison doesn't go away. It just festers and grows. So um, I'm a, a person that doesn't particularly care for conflict. And if there's a way to skirt around an issue historically, um, I've been really good at you know denial or skirting around it yeah. or avoiding it. And I learned that, um, that that's not good for my health and it's certainly not good for the organization. The very best thing to do with poison is to get rid of it immediately. You have to, you yeah. have to. You, you think you can talk yourself out of it, but it doesn't work. Right, right. That's but, such an important lesson. But please know, I learned it very much the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's let's go through a couple of my classic like a boss questions here. And this is probably a really difficult one for you, but describe the typical day in the life of a college president. There's absolutely no typical day. Although my children will tell you, all I do is eat and talk. And that's pretty much a good thing. <laughs> I have breakfast, I have lunch meetings, I have dinner meetings, I have coffee with folks. Um, it's mostly communication, yeah. constant, constant communication, whether it's formal meetings, whether it's speeches, whether it's interactions, meeting people face to face. And that's what I love, mm -hmm. the chance to get together with a group of people and dream some new dreams. How are we going to do this differently? How are we going to hit this challenge head on? So each day might involve, you know, a, a Tuesday, for example, is my staff meeting day. So all my senior team's in here, and we resolve whatever issues are. Frequently, we'll go to lunch together after that. Or um, uh, Then I have uh, usually, no, no kidding, I mean, I get couple hundred emails a day those need some attention oh, wow. I get you know phone calls that need answering so there's always that to be done I'm a real stickler for handwritten thank you notes and that mm -hmm. tends to take a great deal of time yeah um, but it's really um, my job is to to be the living logo of this college and we describe ourselves as being very personal being relevant to the needs of the new economy mm -hmm. being affordable and being guaranteed and we try to live into those attributes in everything we do. So if you say you're personal, you better be personal. You better be out there talking to people. Right, right. So um, you do give a fair amount of speeches. So what's your approach to them? Do you write them yourself? Do you like to be incredibly prepared, or are you just are you just are you just winging it? Um, I write everything mm -hmm. myself, and. Um, I like to be very prepared, which usually for me means being up the entire night before the speech. That's when I, the only time I get to do it. Yeah. Um, I like to put my heart and soul into it to make it a little different from a different perspective and make it as personal as possible. And um, I, I, I love speaking. But what happens is I start to relate to the crowd and then I'm off script and it's, yeah. that's when it becomes so fun. Right. So fun to interact with the audience. Um, so it's certainly clear you have a passion for your job, for Thomas College, the students that you're producing to help the main economy and employers. What's the thing you like least about your job? What do I like least? Um, it's, it's a very taxing pace. Mm -hmm. And the most difficult thing for me is there's just... It's overwhelming to try to, to be really personal and to, and to make those touches yourself. It's hard when I can't do it. It's hard when I get overwhelmed. And particularly through the winter months when I go, don't get my time by a main lake, you know, to yeah. let it all out. Um, it feels like I'm, I'm just drowning in it. And that's that's challenging it's not good for my health right it's it I don't feel as I'm effective as I should be um, I think probably the single greatest thing I should be doing and I need to do it is be optimistic yeah and hopeful and full of energy and so when just the sheer weight of everything that has to be done that 
that gets to be too much sometimes. Sure, a couple hundred emails a day, that's, that would weigh anyone down, never mind all the other things you have to do. So then describe how do you recharge yourself? Like what, mm. what it, describe your main and, and where we can find you and what you're doing. My view of heaven is Bower Bank, Maine, or you know, the greater, that's a suburb of Dover Foxcroft, oh, okay. Bower Bank, um, on the shores of Sebec Lake. And um, that's where I find my peace. I will walk on dirt roads for hours a day. I will read by the shore or on the porch. Favorite thing, the porch. Yeah. yeah. You don't even need the rest of the building, really, just the porch. <laughs> um, the loons, the ducks, the eagles that fly over, the sound of the lake, um, conversation with friends, board games. That's what camp is all about. And for me, the way I get through the winter is I look forward to being in my hometown on that lake with my best friends and family. And what could possibly be better? That's where I read all my books, leadership books, books on higher ed, and dream the dreams for the college and work everything out on the dirt roads. Well, that is a great way for us to wrap up. Laurie, thank you for being our guest, and thank you for all the work that you do at uh, Thomas College with all the students. Um, You're a great leader and a, a wonderful guest for us to have today on Like a Boss. Thanks for joining us, and thanks to our sponsors, Bernstein Shore, New England Cancer Specialists, Live and Work in Maine.com, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, People's United Bank, and Vistage. For more information on the sponsors, the Like a Boss podcast, and Like a Boss live events, visit likeaboss.pressherald.com. Thank you.